Hey, this is Brock Lemires. We're continuing our study of embedded systems design. We have switched over to the language C to program our MSP430. And we're through all the things that we learned about how to do in assembly, but now in C. In this video, we're going to look at interrupts in C, and then we'll do an example of using a port interrupt to respond to a switch press as opposed to pulling it. Okay. All right. So when you use a peripheral uh, to trigger an interrupt, the process is always kind of the same. You have to configure the peripheral first. So you got to get it set up the way you want to do it. So if we want to use a port interrupt, we got to tell it, hey, is this an input? Do you need a, you know, a resistor pull up or pull down? Which, which polarity is it? And then the only difference when you use an interrupt is you allow the input transition to trigger an interrupt flag as opposed to reading from the input port. And so uh, you clear the interrupt flag within the interrupt service routine, but I always like to do it right away, even if it's defaulted uh, out of reset. I like to have this uh, you know, manually done so I know it then. Then to turn on the interrupts, uh, all the peripherals are maskable interrupts. That means that each has a local interrupt flag or local interrupt enable, and each one is masked out by the global interrupt enable or the GIE bit in the status stretcher. So this is the exact same thing we learned about in assembly, uh, but we're going to do it in C. Okay. Now, remember, when you set up an uh, interrupt, you have to write an interrupt service routine. Okay. Obviously, if you're going to enable an interrupt, it's going to try to, when it fires, it's going to go try to find a service routine to execute. And it needs to get the starting address of the interrupt service routine from the vector address. So we need to not only write an interrupt service routine, mark its starting address with some type of address label or routine label, and then initialize the vector address. So this is where it gets different in C. You're going to have different syntax to do this, So to do some of these steps. So for example, there is a function that is provided called underscore underscore enable interrupt. And what this does is it sets the GIE, GIE bit in the status register. We could absolutely do a bitwise uh, logic operation to set this, but it's better to use whatever they provide because this might just be better. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. That's the equivalent of EINT in assembly. Then when it comes down to try to write the interrupt service routine and initialize a vector table, there's two pieces of syntax which are supported in this, this version of CCS for this microcontroller. And one of them is going to be called pound pragma. And what this does is it specifies the interrupt vector. And the way that this works is whatever the, whatever the routine is that comes right after this pragma is going to be the address of the starting of the, of the routine. And so then what we do is you say pragma vector, and then you have a vector label. And so this is where we have to provide which interrupt we are actually writing a service routine for. And then underneath that, you use this thing called underscore underscore interrupt. And that denotes that this is a ISR and not a subroutine. And the reason that that's critical is because we don't want the compiler to initialize a vector address and then have it be a subroutine. And that's because if you remember, this is why we learned assembly. A service routine pulls two things off the stack. It pulls the program counter and the status register. A subroutine only pulls the program counter. So you can crash your computer if you do not denote that that routine is an ISR versus a subroutine. Okay, so let's, uh, then the final thing that's different is the, the labels that are defined for each of the peripheral vector table they're different syntax than in assembly. And so I created this table. It's the same exact table as we looked at before that lists out all the interrupts available to us uh, in the vector table for the MSP430 FR2355. Uh, but you notice this last column is different. Now, don't ask me why it's different. <laughs> I, tend, I think the labels for C are much better, uh, but they're different from assembly. And so that means that when you're programming in C, all the steps are kind of the same. There's a little bit of different syntax. But you have to remember these vector labels are different. So if we're going to go and program uh, an example for port four, we're going to do a port four interrupt that looks at the switch. The name of the vector address is called port four underscore vector. And you go, well, where do you use that? And you use that with the dot pragma. OK, OK, so best way to learn this is let's do one. All right. So let's fire up a actually let's fire up a. New Code Composers uh, project, and here's our task that we are going to do. We are going to 
basically toggle an LED using an interrupt service routine when someone presses SW1. Remember, SW1 is a port. It's SW1 is port four, bit one. So each bit in every port has the ability to raise a flag that can trigger an interrupt. And so what we'll do is our program will do this. We're gonna initialize the LED one and switch one. So that's the peripherals. Then we're gonna go ahead and initialize the interrupt on port four bit one, which essentially means, you know, set the interrupt polarity, uh, sensitivity, local enable, global enable, and then our main loop will do nothing. It's just gonna sit and spin. Then we will write a separate interrupt service routine that when it's fired, what it's gonna do is toggle LED one, and of course, clear that flag. All right, so let's do it. So let's go file new CCS project. Okay? And what we're doing today is we're programming in C, and we are gonna do uh, IRQs, and this is gonna be port for S1, okay, empty only, and go ahead and finish. And here comes our, here comes our main dot C, and let's go ahead and nuke that comment, and we're gonna come down into our main program area, and the first thing we wanna do is set up the ports, okay? So I'm gonna, let's do, uh, let's do LED one. So we'll config uh, P1 bit zero, which is LED one to an output. And that's LED1, okay? So to do that, we're gonna do some bitwise logic operations. P1DIR is the name of the direction register for port one, and I do a bitwise OR with a mask called bit zero. And what that does is it sets bit zero of the port one data direction register, okay? Life is good. Let's go ahead and clear it to start. So we'll have this be off. So I'm gonna to write to P1 out, and I'm going to clear the bit using a bitwise and, but I have to invert the mask so that the logic is correct. So this is gonna clear P10 initially, and that's LED1. <clears throat> okay, LED, the LED setup, let's do the switch. So this is on port four bit one. So I need to do this, I need to config, port four bit one as input, okay? And this is switch one. Now this is, it's an input by default, but I always do it like this because I wanna be explicit and it's almost just like readable. So port four DIR, and I'm gonna clear the bit now to make it an input. So I'm gonna do a bitwise and with a mask that is inverted called bit one, okay? So there is, now I just have my switch one port as an input, <clears throat> and now let's enable the resistor, okay? And the way that I wanna do that is I'm gonna do port four resistor enable, and I need to set the bit. So I need to set bit one. So I'm gonna do a bitwise or operation on a mask called bit one. And what that does is it turns on the pull up, pull down resistor. Now I have to tell it whether it's an up or a down resistor. So that's, I use the secondary function for P4 out. So I do P4 out and I, I need to set the bit to make it a pull up resistor. So I'm gonna do a bitwise or <clears throat> on that same mask. And then that does makes resistor a pull up, okay? And now we have a new setting that we have because we're doing uh, interrupts. So we have the port for interrupt edge sensitivity. And so if I set this bit, <clears throat> recall back from our assembly days that this makes sensitivity high to low. And so if I have a one in, well, remember the bit one there, don't forget that little fella. If I set bit one of this register, it's gonna make the interrupt edge sensitivity fire when there's a transition from high to low. Why do we need that? Well, we need that because we have a single pull, single throw switch that has its output connected to ground. So when I press the button, it produces a zero. <clears throat> when I don't push the button, the pull-up resistor internally pulls it to a one. So that's the logic I need. Last thing to do is turn on the entire digital I.O. system. And I do that by setting a bit in the power, power module five CTL zero register, and I need to clear a bit, so I do a bitwise and with an inversion of the lock LPM5 
register. <laughs> so I turn on G or digital <clears throat> IO. Okay, so that at that moment in time, I have the the port set up. Okay, so the the ports are ready. And now let's set up the interrupt. Okay, so set up IRQ. All right, what do we need to do? Let's go ahead and enable the local uh, enable for port four bit five or bit one. So I need to do enable port four bit one IRQ. So this is the local enable. So I'm going to do port four IE. That's the register name that holds the local interrupt enables. Okay, and so I'm going to do a bitwise or to set bit one. <clears throat> Okay, so I just enabled it. Cool. Then I'm going to do a global enable. But instead of just setting the GIE bit uh, directly, I'm going to use the function provided. Underscore, underscore, enable, <clears throat> interrupt, boom, boom. And now notice that what this, it turned purple. Okay, so this is enable maskable IRQs. It noticed that that was a, a, an actual function. Okay, so it's a built-in function. Okay, my comments don't look so great, but you're, we're okay. <laughs> okay, last thing, I always want to clear. So I'm going to do clear P, 4-bit 1, IRQ, flag. And so that buddy right there is going to be P4 IFG. That's the, the register name that holds all the flags for port 4. And I need to clear it. So I'm going to do a bitwise and <clears throat> with... <clears throat> with an inversion of bit one. <clears throat> okay. All right. So that's, that's that. So that's the enable. Life is good. Okay. Now I need to initialize a spin forever. So let's do that with a while one. And then I'm just going to do this. Done. <clears throat> so this is going to be loop forever. Okay. Well, that feels good. All right. So we're done. <clears throat> There's only one more thing we got to do here. We got to write the interrupt service routine and we got to initialize the vector table. So I am going to now do the following. I am going to leave <clears throat> the main curly brackets. We are outside of the curly brackets now. So here we go. We're in uncharted territory. So the first thing I'm going to do is put a little comment block here that says uh, IRSs, <clears throat> uh, interrupt service routines. Okay. So this is interrupt service routines. Uh, and I make a nice little header there. And here we go. This is where we're going to write the routine, but we do it as follows. I put pound pragma. This pragma is going to send a different, it's, it's almost like a directive. It's telling it, it's like, hey, I need to do something that's not a statement. I need to talk to the compiler real quick. And so it does dot pragma <clears throat> and it says vector equals, and this is port for vector. So that's the syntax right now. And what it's telling it is it's saying the next routine, the address of the next routine that comes right here is going to be the address that I will put into the interrupt vector table at the location of port four. I do underscore, underscore interrupt, <clears throat> and that tells it, hey, this is an interrupt service routine. So make sure to put that RETI instruction at the end and not RET. And now I just write essentially a C subroutine. So I do, I'll call it uh, void ISR port. Now I'm making up my own name here, port four, switch one, <clears throat> void. There's no arguments that are passed in. And I go ahead and say, boom. And here I go. So now what do you want to do? Well, I want to, let's toggle LED one. So port one out, uh, bitwise exclusive or, which will toggle bit zero. So this will toggle LED one. And then got to clear that flag. Luckily, I always copy and paste it, so I'm going to do a boom, <clears throat> boom. All right, life is good. So let's go ahead and save that up. We did a whole lot of code in there. Let's see if we how many syntax errors we have to begin with. <clears throat> One error. So let's let's find that. Okay. So it looks like I forgot the bit. Uh, one on there. That seems to be a common error. <laughs> okay. Let's go ahead and compile that. Did we have now? Let's see how many other syntax errors we have. None, it appears. That's not too bad. All right, all right. And so it's configuring it, downloads it, uh, blah, blah, blah. Boom. Okay, so I'm done. Let's go ahead and just go for it. So I got my board plugged in and I'm going to run. And I've got LED one right here. And I just, I'm going to press, I'm going to press switch one and it should toggle it. 
Oh, oh, oh. Look at that. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> now that is awesome. Awesome. Now, the last thing I want to show you is I want to prove to myself that I'm actually <clears throat> running an interrupt service routine. So I'm going to set a breakpoint in the interrupt service routine and show you that breakpoints work the same in C as they do in assembly. It still works. So if I come in here, I'm going to come down here uh, and in my interrupt service routine, I'm going to go ahead and set a breakpoint right there. And if I run this, okay, it's running. And if I hit this button, it will go into the interrupt service routine and stop. So I hit it and boom, lo and behold, look at what happened. It jumped into the interrupt service routine. So that proves to my set, that proves a lot when you're debugging this. It proves that you actually went to the right interrupt service routine because you had this set up correctly. And then as you step, it turns it on, step, and you return to the main loop, <clears throat> that shows you that you had the RETI instruction implemented correctly. So you did the syntax for returning. If you didn't have that, uh, the if you forgot to put this, as soon as you exited the service routine, the computer would crash, okay? So this, it's very powerful. All right, awesome. Congratulations, you just programmed an interrupt on the MSP430 in C. Could you believe, can you believe you did that? I bet you never thought you'd be able to do it, but you did it, wow. All right, <laughs> that's it. Uh, remember, support my channel by subscribing and see ya.